Right, so welcome everyone. This is uh, Chippy from uh, UMPC Portal. Thanks for turning up in the chat room. We've got uh, 75 people in the chat room. Probably the numbers will rise as we go on a bit later in the day in the, in the States because it's only 8 o'clock here in the evening in uh, Europe. I guess people on the East Coast are still thinking about lunchtime. So um, on the West Coast, sorry. So we've got the M912X from Gigabyte here with us today. And this one's been sent over by uh, Mobile X in Europe. Uh, sorry, in, in Hungary, M O B I L X dot E U. Thanks very much to them. They've got some good contacts out at Gigabyte, I'm sure, because this is uh, a demo device. This is not a full production device, as it gives it a good polish. Um, although, having said that, I think it's pretty close. The reason I think it's pretty close is because there's um, d uh, a CD, a uh, set of CDs in the box which are printed uh, with the um, M912 logo and uh, it looks like it's fairly final. The reason I think there might be a delay now and y if you've read the first, uh, the rumor is that it's um, delays in Atom and that's not the first time I've heard that news and uh, many of you that are in, in the <coughs> in also uh, following the scene will have read that story a couple of times but I've heard it recently this week by two people uh, saying that there are some real atom delays so unfortunately this might not be available in volume until September so let's uh, get on with it for those that you don't that uh, don't know what the M912 is and I doubt many of you don't know what it is it's um, a touch convertible touchscreen netbook is the best way we can describe it based on Intel Atom at 1.6 gigahertz so basically it's a netbook plus extras and when I take you around the device in a minute, we'll um, we can talk about those uh, those extras. By the way, if you've got questions, um, drop them in the uh, chat channel as we go along. For those watching uh, this video pre-recorded, uh, pre then obviously I'm going to be answering live uh, questions from the chat room. So you might <coughs> hear me get distracted about questions. Right going to take you around the device so first of all it's it, it's um, slightly bigger I want to do size comparison than the SC3 I was testing the other day I'm going to put the Kojinsha SC3 on top and you get an idea of how much bigger the device is you can see about 40 mil on the right hand side and also about 20 mil to 30 mil uh, in terms of depth um, on the table the devices uh, are pretty much the same, it's probably about 5 mil more in the gigabyte but you might be more familiar with the MSI Wind so let's put it on top of the MSI Wind and you'll see that in fact it's slightly about 20 mil less wide than the MSI Wind but it's a little bit heavier this is uh, about 1.3, 1.4 kilos. I haven't actually uh, weighed it myself yet, but it's noticeably hev heavier than the uh, MSI Wind or the, the Median Okoya that I've got. And I'll talk about some problems with the weight uh, a bit later. So, you will have probably seen uh, some videos about this from uh, Computex. So let, I will start. Let's, uh, yeah, I'll start from scratch really, because those videos at Computex probably showed a device that was in much more of a pre-production state than this one, because this one is nice, nicely finished. And when we talk about the uh, pivot, um, I can say that this one's quite stable and um, doesn't seem to have the problems that people saw at Computex. <coughs> so going around the device then gonna zoom in and sorry I just have to refocus this cam and I'm gonna put some lights on one second okay so hopefully it'll be a bit easier to see it on the side now Right, and this is the left-hand side, Kensington Lock Ethernet. This is a 10100. It's not gigabit 
capable uh, fan out output or is it input I think it's in on this side one USB 2 connector let's just get that so that you can see it properly and then on the end here two ports one is the SD cards this is the PCI Express 34 slot so this is going to be useful if you've got a PCI Express 34 card you can just uh, stuff it in there actually if you look on the uh, gallery on UMPC portal you'll see a couple of pictures of the uh, device with a 3G module in across the front of the device there's nothing two apart from two loudspeaker outlets the loudspeakers are fairly loud but uh, but not uh, top quality, uh, reasonable quality, not uh, unacceptable. So on the right hand side, this is a power switch, two more USB 2, so you've got three USB 2s in total, headphone, microphone, VGA output, and power. On the back, this is where the four cell battery is. This is a 4,400 milliamp hour four cell battery. And it's quite nicely uh, flush with the base of the device. So for a four cell battery, that's fitted in quite nicely. Uh, 32 watt hour. So it's got potentially a bit more juice than something like the uh, Acer Aspire and MSI Wind. But it's not as high capacity as the Asus um, 901, which comes with a six cell 48,000 milliamp hours. <coughs> and 11.1 volts 48,000 4,800 sorry also on the bottom all right you'll see three screws here one two three now that's uh, an access port now the reason that's there is because gigabyte are shipping this as uh, what they call a bare bones device to resellers resellers are allowed to uh, retrofit their own disk memory and operating system onto this so that the reason they've left that easily accessible is for the resellers but that's also pretty handy for us because it means we can open that up and um, drop our own drives in upgrade the memory and there's even a PCI Express mini slot I've had a look in there actually let me just um, put a link in the in the chat because I opened it up earlier and took a picture there's um, one memory slot with one gig in this version which I assume can be upgraded to two gigs I haven't actually uh, tried it yet there's uh, the two and a half inch serial ATA drive can tell you a bit about the performance on that later it's good uh, let me just drop the link in the chat there's a link to the picture if you just click on that you'll see the picture and uh, there's a PCI mini express card for the Wi-Fi I believe it is and there's a free PCI Express mini slot so there's some possibilities there now um, 3G is the thing that comes to mind obviously um, SSDs yeah let's see anyway that's good news now the finish on the device as you can see is shiny and it's a fingerprint magnet really uh it's nice if i can just put it close to the screen you'll see it's got like um mm, wait how can i get that difficult for you to see that because of the lighting in here but you might be able to see that it's got um kind of gray squares printed on it actually looks really nice until you get the fingerprints on it as you can see i'm wiping it every five seconds here now opening it up my first impressions when I opened it up were mm, boring it doesn't look that stylish when you open it up the keyboard is the same as the one on the EPCs it's the same as the uh, SA1 Kojinsha, SA5 Kojinsha, SH6, SH8 and I think even the Flybook V5 so um, it's that very very small keyboard which is only just good enough for touch typing as much bigger than the keyboard on the Kajinsha SC3 which is super tiny but if you put it next to the MSI wind I'm going to do that right now you'll see the difference in keyboard size so if I can 
by putting that on top you can see the keyboard width and by putting it on the side you can see that the keyboard the keys are actually much smaller let me see that big hands now there's a couple of things to say about the keyboard itself it's 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 good so there's a good registration of the keys uh, it's not rattly at all there's a little bit of an issue with um, bulging or, or um, bowing of the keyboard as you push it down now it doesn't affect your typing at all it's just a little bit disconcerting to see the keyboard moving up and down if I can I might be able to zoom in and uh, show you that but just take my word from it it just bows a little bit only about a millimeter and it's possible that Gigabyte could actually pack that or it's possible that this has keyboard hasn't actually been fitted properly um, to the final device so that's one thing to to bear in mind flexi flexi 116 people in the chat channel thanks for joining everyone uh, if you just joined this is the Gigabyte M912 it's been sent over as a demo device it's not the final production device been huh? my PC has just gone into uh, hibernation one second very handy the uh, I'm actually running a laptop on a big monitor here and the uh, power cable fell out no worries because the other PC is still working with the uh, camera <coughs> so as I was saying thanks to mobile X for sending this over this is a demo device not the full production device but I think pretty close as I said okay for the screen this is an 8.9 inch screen and as a special feature on one uh, or two of the versions of this device and that is that it's a 1280 by 768 device so it's a much higher resolution than uh, the MSO Wind and the Acer Aspire and all the other uh, netbooks that have come out so 1280 by 768 and I think on this 8.9 inch scr screen that is actually fine uh, if you look at the pixels per inch on something like the MSI Wind uh, it's around 130 I think most people can, can comf comfortably go up to uh, about 200 pixels per inch like you get on a um, for example Q1 Ultra 7 inch screen 1024 by 600 so I like that and that gives a lot more screen real estate and uh, browsing and spreadsheets are going to be much much easier to use as long as you don't have problems with the with your eyes and it could be an issue if you have a problem with your eyes bear with me just trying to bring my laptop back okay I'm back in the room um, the mouse pointer at the front is a standard synaptics mouse pointer now on the right hand side it's got scroll it's got tap to click it's got du double tap to drag which is good because the actual mouse buttons on this are pretty hard to press and I'm not finding them very nice at all um, I, d I don't use left mouse button a lot, I'd use tap to click uh, and I, uh, but I do use right button and when I use the right button I'm finding this quite hard to press so it's one thing one thing to note there there's a webcam in the front in the middle it is as he checks the st as he checks the information page which I think 1.3 megapixels must be I I'm just checking that now, one second. Gigabyte, gigabyte, gigabyte. 912X. Hmm, I haven't got the spec in front of me, but I think it's 1.3. Thank you, Ustreamer3170. So 1.3. Tested it uh, with Skype yet. Um, so we might be able to test that later when JKK comes online. Now that's pretty much it for the outside of the device. Someone asked if it's got a built-in microphone. That's the bit I missed. Here, on the top left, built-in microphone. Anything else I missed? I think that's pretty much it. Kensington lock port 
on the back on the left. So let's switch it on. This is running Vista Home Premium. As you can see, it came out of standby pretty quick. And um, what I'm going to do is just bring the camera in now. So things won't go as smoothly now. I've only got one camera. And I lost my high def camera, or my, let's say, my proper video camera with the zoom and the autofocus. So I'm surviving on a little webcam here. So, uh, let's just say to start with that Vista Home Premium seems to be working very nicely indeed. Uh, this has got one gigabyte of RAM in it. And I'm uh, really quite surprised how well it's uh, working. Everything's started up very quickly. Standby and um, or return from standby is really quick. And um, it's actually probably one of the most enjoyable mini devices with Vista I've ever used. Certainly much much better than the SC3 and the reason it might be um, so good is because of the hard drive. We, I really want to highlight this, the uh, Serial ATA 160 gig hard drive in this is fast. Up to 60 megabytes a second transfer speed. I've done some uh, HD tune tests on it and write speed was uh, over 40, way over 40 um, in fact, maybe I can get the um, picture up. I did take a picture of it. One second, picture, picture, pictures. So my HD tune result. The maximum write speed was. Sorry, this is uh, HD tune, so this is read speed only. 61 megabytes a second down to 19.4, so it's pretty fast. Re and I think that's making a. Uh, a lot of difference. If you're going to throw around video files on this, and this I'll show you in a bit, plays videos really well, um, it's going to, you're going to be able to load stuff off the network really quickly. Uh, off your local network, no problems at all. Uh, on a crystal mark test, the write speed I think was 51 megabytes a, a second. So, one second, I've just got to close my studio door. So uh, this has got Wi-Fi, blu uh, Bluetooth uh, 2.0, and the Wi-Fi is working nicely. It seems to be medium to strong in comparison with other devices I've tried, and um, that's a good thing. Now let's uh, give you a few demos on um, browsing. This is YouTube. Go straight into uh, a YouTube video. It's uh, loud. <laughs> One second. It's fast and perfect, both full screen and minimized mode. So uh, YouTube is done in CPU. Uh, it's flash video. It's all done in CPU, and that's uh, really works works nicely. Um, let's give you a couple of other web pages. Let's go straight to Engadget. It's all all um, works perfectly, basically. Grab and drag's working, although not as smooth as I'd like it. Um, I can't. I find it difficult to get the um, what do you call it? The momentum working. There you go. There's the momentum working. But it looks. I mean it's very quick and you get full size everything is full size and everything is nice <laughs> nice so there you can see actually sort of how wide or well, 12800 by 600 is and I think my site is uh, optimized for 1000 pixels wide and there you see now on an MSI wind I think that fills up the whole screen so lots of space, and if you need to pump the um, the size up, of course, Firefox 3 has a beautiful um, magnification feature. So just Control Plus or Control Minus, everything zooms in 
really really nicely so big advantage of having the 1280 by uh, 600 is you can just zoom in or pump up font sizes to suit uh, to suit what you need so I want to mention something about the screen um, this screen of course is uh, touch you've seen that and the color on it I don't find to be let's say top notch I find it to be acceptable and there are certain angles of the screen where it, it's it, the contrast of it is much better than um, much better than in other angles but in most angles I'm finding that the 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 blacks look a little bit gray so let's say the the, the dynamics or the the, the depth of the uh, color is not really as good as it uh, it could be now remember this is a demo device and they might tweak it up for the uh, final version I've tried tweaking with the graphics uh, color settings and uh, haven't really got haven't been been able to make it any better but let's just say it's it's acceptable as it is at the moment but could be better and I hope that they fix that or improve that for the final version but I wouldn't worry about it too much uh, if you're thinking about a purchase viewing angles all the way around are pretty good up down uh, is very good on the viewing angles it's just that if you want that good color definition there's only one and that's probably about it angle that's uh, good so um, just looking at the chat channel any questions from anyone about the screen the touch screen is light light touch screen ah and I missed something didn't I there it is stylus so the stylus is a single thin uh, metallic uh, piece actually quite nice um, it's nice and long some of them are too too short and that goes in the top left there wasn't a spare one in the box but I guess there's going to be spare ones when you get it so screen uh, yeah just look I'm just looking at the chat channel at the moment um, screen hinge okay let's just quickly talk about this the screen hinge. screen hinge I I think it's um, good good enough quality I think it might loosen up quite a bit over use uh, and as with all of these convertible types there's a little bit of floppiness in it but that's the same with all of them especially when it's got a bigger screen like that um, the rotation if it's the same piece of hardware as on the Kajincha then it's going to be fine and it certainly feels as strong as the Kajincha as well and I've had three of the Kajinchas actually four Kajinchas now with with convertible screens and um, they've all been fine so um, I'm not too worried about that uh, someone asked what soft touch means well there's two or three different types of uh, well two types of touchscreen hard and soft hard the idea of a hard touchscreen is that if you wanted to actually write on the screen and versions of Vista will allow you to do handwriting re recognition you can actually rest one part of your hand on the screen and write with your fingers now with a soft touch screen you can't do that as soon as you touch with your palm uh, you, you you actually uh, the cursor moves to your palm so you can't actually uh, write so this is a soft touch screen uh, the advantage of it is that you can use it with your finger hard touch screen you have to be poking with your nail and I don't find those uh, usable at all especially if you want to use it in a car situation uh, where you want to be finger only French oh, I'm sorry I don't understand your questions <laughs> Right, um, let's give you a few uh, demos now then. I want to show you some uh, uh, video demos on this. Uh, we very easy to show you these. I've got some videos that I've downloaded. 
and I'll show you DivX, Windows Media Video and H.264 now I've downloaded the um, uh, K-Lite pack standard so we're running on Windows Media Player Classic with the K-Lite co pack codex in it okay um, they're fairly efficient um, but it's a very easy download and pretty highly recommended if you want to watch a video on a, a low-end device like this so let's start with an H.264 um, video um, let's get the details up one second so this is um, six I'm just checking on the uh, statistics of this file this is a 640 by 344 at one second just checking the bitrate 2.5 kilobits a second and I go full screen on that you won't be able to see it perfectly on the uh, the video but let me tell you it's absolutely perfect here and it it's looking pretty good but that's only a 640 by uh, whatever it was 480 let's pump it up a bit and we'll go to 720p H264 this is I'm just checking the bitrate on this two and a half kilobits a second and it's a 720 piece at 720 by what is it for one second 720 by 408 this one is so let's put that full, sc full screen and that looks that looks really nice uh, the, of course the clarity is uh, is good but it's it's only 720 by uh, 408 so you don't need a 1280 by 768 screen to play that but it's very good quality now this is a 1920p file and let me give you the statistics on this one 1920 wide by 1080 high so it's actually cutting the uh, size of it down and it's struggling with this one I'll put it full screen uh, view full screen yeah you can't handle that one so that was a 1920 which is a bit uh, overdoing it a bit but just to, to show you the the limits on that one um, so 720p looks fine so that, now let's go to uh, Windows Media Video will use the Coral Reef Adventure Windows Media Video 9 HD demo which is a 720p file and this is beautiful and of course you won't be able to see it on the video but the frame rate is perfect the, oh, it's a brilliant, a brilliant um, film clip as well and that's playing absolutely perfectly and that's a six point no a six megabits per second Windows Media Video 9 file um, it's just uh, how do I get that what have I done let's exit that so video next one up from that is a 7.5 megabit per second Windows Media Video file this is a Call of Duty demo and running in the window it's perfect but if you go to full screen on this one one or two frames but it's still pretty good this is full screen 7.5 megabits per second Windows Media Video 9 and it's looking really nice maybe I can give you some stats on the uh, frame size on that one 1280 by 720 
So this is almost exactly the size of the screen. And of course it's a rendered uh, video so it's not uh, not as impressive as it might be if it was a real video. But it's working working pretty well. I'm running on battery by the way here um, and we're on balance mode so the processor will be dropping down to 800 megahertz when uh, when it's not working. Someone said they want to see the CPU utilization on that. Okay, let me do that again. Sixty between fifty and sixty-five percent CPU utilization. And it started to drop actually. Now I'm going to switch it to high performance mode could be because I've got another window in front of it but it's having problems with that yeah it's because I had a window open in front of it it was struggling with that yeah so that's pretty nice um, so let's move on to, quickly on to um, DivX One second. This is a two megabit per second DivX. It's a piece of cake. Transformers uh, film demo. Perfect full screen. No problems there. Uh, we go up to a five megabit per second DivX. This is actually. Let's give you the stats on the, f the frame size. 1280 by 532. We'll put that full screen. And again, it's perfect. And in fact, this is a really, really impressive video on this. The clarity is superb. Very impressive. Now you have to throw that up on a uh, external monitor or a projector. It'll be really good. And then one more. One higher than that, I've got a six and a half megabits per second. This is a time lapse film. And it's uh, perfect, and it's running at f between 50 and 55% CPU. So DivX. Actually, as on most uh, devices, DivX is pretty easy, and that will go up to um, <coughs> that will go up to seven, eight megabits a second, I guess, on DivX, which is um, it's pretty nice. So, as a video machine, really uh, no problems there at all. It's quite impressive. So, what we've we got, we've got Vista working well, we've got video working well, um, browsing is working well, the touchscreen is working well. Um, what I need to do is just check the chat channel temperatures okay well we've been pushing it pretty hard and I've got my hand underneath it it's warm but it wouldn't be uncomfortable on a lap it's certainly not hot in terms of fan noise the fan is on you might be able to hear it on the mic if I put it really close but it sounds like it's a uh, quite a large fan it's got a very smooth um, sound so um, all you can hear is the all you can hear is the actual uh, fan the air coming out of the fan vents and it's um, not distracting at all so it's really nice so let me show you um, as I mentioned fan is quiet I'm just looking at the chat channel for some uh, some questions there yeah well, someone's just asked about the window screen rotation so there you go that's the screen rotated so that will be as someone mentioned in the uh, in the forum that it could be pretty handy for car in car use that will certainly be nice and big for maps I mean uh, you can imagine uh, how much information with Google Maps you'll be able to get on this the only problem is I need to use the keyboard to access the URL 
So it would be better to have um, touch features on the um, device. I'm just bringing out Google Maps. doesn't seem to be working doesn't seem to be loading the actual map but anyway for in car use for maps you're going to get a whole lot of information on this on this screen really nicely so let's just go back to that uh, touch screen uh, sorry tablet mode um, this is 1.3 1.4 kilos so I'm actually not really that impressed with um, with the way it feels in one hand you, you certainly couldn't hold it in one hand and um, an ink on it or or even use your finger because it's way too heavy for that and my feeling it needs to be under one kilo for it to be that um, that useful but it looks pretty nice you can see the thickness of it really uh, really nice there So someone asked about uh, screen rotation. I think there is screen rotation in the um, drivers. So let's do that. And there you go. So we've got uh, and everything's working nicely with the uh, screen rotation. So this 600 well 1280 by 768 so 768 wide 1280 high let's put let's get google reader up or uh, in gadget maybe because in gadget is a long page so there you go if only this wasn't so heavy, that would make a beautiful ebook. But I'm afraid for an ebook, it needs to be under half that weight. Really nice. I'm using grab and drag on Firefox here. If you have a touchscreen device and you're using the browser, make sure you get Firefox 3 and install grab and drag, which is a superb add on. Gives you some nice. Um, touch capability on the screen so let's put that back and it looks like the maybe the touch isn't perfectly aligned might have to recalibrate this Yeah, it's not perfectly aligned. So it's oh damn, now I've <laughs> now I've lost the uh graphics panel. So I'm going to have to go into control panel and fix it from there. So, display settings, rotation, zero. Okay. Okay. Gigabyte maybe should do a little rotation um application which reminds me about buttons on the actual keyboard so um, as usual on the keyboard on the top row there's some um, oh sorry that's really not that Let's see if I can pump up the uh, brightness on that one okay at the top here you've got a uh, suspend button and these are all accessed by the function key suspend Wi-Fi off uh, brightness up brightness down external monitor touchscreen off so you can actually turn the touchscreen off which can be quite useful uh, volume up volume down and volume mute there's no Bluetooth uh, radio on off uh, button 
Um, Bluetooth doesn't usually take much power, so it doesn't hurt to leave it on all the time, usually. But um, I do like to have a button, an RF off button for everything if possible. Right. Just show you some uh, pictures on the gallery. Touchscreen is really nice on the uh, gallery, of course. Just touch to advance. And of course, the uh, pictures look pretty stunning. Someone asked, can you switch off BT via software? Uh, yes, of course, you can actually disable it in the hardware manager, I assume, but uh, I don't find that very uh, very useful. Just watching the questions going through on the chat channel. Does handwriting work on it? Um, regarding this display brightness, it looks like it's less bright than the Q1 Ultra and the MSI Wind. Uh, it's really difficult to tell at this stage whether that's going to be the final version of the screen. I have a feeling that they will tweak that for the final version because it doesn't really look like it's optimal at the moment. Um, it would it would stand out from the crowd if they left it if they left it with this screen on it. Um, that's not to say it's bad. It's just to say that it's not as good as it could be. All the other lead back leaked screens are excellent. <clears throat> so, someone's saying M912 performance in the SC3 shell. So I, I think it's about time I actually did some size comparisons now. So let me just uh, change the... perspective. I'm going to bring in some other devices to give you an idea how big or small this is. Firstly I'll bring in the, uh, the SC3. Now then, the SC3 is... I need to move the camera back. So the SC3 is absolutely tiny in comparison. You see the way I'm holding it? Now this is a device you could use as an ebook reader. It's 800 grams. It's not ideal, but um, it's got the form factor to be held in one hand. This is one of the massive advantages, and really the the difference between ultra mobile PCs and netbooks is that you can use them with one hand. Now this is a perfect example of a of a notebook you can actually use in one hand. You can use it like this, and you see I'm holding it at the back like that. You can use it like this, one hand this this and of course all those were without using a table so of course when we go to a table use we can use it normally anyway so there's a size comparison it's a lot lot smaller now let me bring in the uh, MSI wind uh, before I do that I just want to check um, Check the instant message. Uh, someone said, "Does an SC3 exist with a non-Japanese keyboard?" At the moment, SC3 is only an import device, so you will only find it with a Japanese keyboard on. But um, I'm trying to find out from VIPC actually if they're going to get that sorted out with a. English or US keyboard. Right, there's the MSI Wind next to it. Um, I'm just going to have to go back even further for this. As you can see, similar size, but look at the keyboard. Keyboard on the MSI Wind is uh, much, much bigger. Uh, 
and if I put one on top of the other you'll see the MSI wind is slightly wider and let's give you a quick uh, idea of the thickness let's collapse the camera down you can see the M912 is uh, well it's actually about two or three millimeters thicker but it's not significant remember the Gigabyte has a bigger battery than the MSI wind so more comparisons <clears throat> let's uh, bring in the Q1 Ultra so the Q1 Ultra doesn't have a keyboard but there you can see how much smaller the Q1 Ultra is okay it's about as thick but I have the extended battery on here which is a six cell uh, four cell uh, 56 watt hour battery much bigger battery than the um, gigabyte so although the M912 is small it's not that small and then if we reach over to one of the smallest of the UMPCs this is a 1.2 gigahertz via based Y brain there you go we're getting down to pocketable devices there I mean there's no comparison in terms of uh, usage but in terms of uh, sizing if you know how big a Y brain is then it might give you an idea how big the M912 is there's a smartphone and a pocket PC on top remember those so 150 people in here this is fantastic thanks everyone for coming along give you a quick uh, update on what I'm doing this is the Gigabyte M912 X version this is a demo device sent over by mobilex.eu those guys seem to have good contacts at Gigabyte because they had the M704 pretty early as well and as you can see it's netbook sized with a touch convertible screen 1024 by 608.9 inch and remember 10 sorry 1280 by 768 remember that's much more than the standard netbook there will be a version of this with a 1024 by 600 screen 8.9 inch again and there will be a version of this with Linux or there will be a version of this with the uh, X XP Okie doke. Um, let's have a look at the. Um, there you go. Almost instant startup. Although the touchscreen doesn't start up straight away. About three seconds to get in. As I say, I'm really impressed with uh, with Vista on this. It's um, working really well. That's straight in. The Wi-Fi is connected straight away, and uh, and I can start to start browsing almost instantly. So YouTube up YouTube and that's playing so really quick to switch on um, gonna, t gonna do some browsing now and then I'm gonna look at the uh, battery life figures um, we have to be aware again that this is a demo device not final there might be driver differences there might be uh, hardware changes uh, that need to be done for the final version but it will give us an idea of uh, ballpark figures so let's get some uh, some windows up uh, tab 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 so do a bit of scrolling let's go I Google as well I Google and bring the camera and you can't hardly see what's going on here So, five windows running. 
let's get YouTube playing go back to iGoogle you are watching Road to Redemption. so the video playing in the background and I'm still checking stuff out here so let's fire up a few other programs that we've got here uh, for example let's get Skype going let's get the photo gallery going let's get uh, Adobe Reader up let's get we've got Firefox up let's get Windows Media Player up as well don't know why the programs haven't populated in the uh, program part uh, oh, what the hell let's get Movie Maker up this is all running in one gigabyte by the way which is um, I have to say I'm pretty surprised with so Windows Movie Maker and let's get Media Player up as well Media 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 Player <coughs> and we'll play a tune as well slowing down a bit now not surprising although switching between windows seems to be pretty good All right, that's enough. Let's have a look at the uh, battery life now. So we were in oh, we were in high performance mode. That's probably not the best one to be in. So we've been killing the device on Wi-Fi and CPU. One hour, twenty minutes left with seventy-seven back, seventy-seven percent remaining. So that's actually two two hours uh, max, and this is a pretty hard test. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take it down. Whoa, it's everything happening here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's really happening here. It's actually slowed the device right down now. I think I've done a little bit too much. There we go. Quit. Let's get rid of Adobe Reader. Get rid of Media Player, get rid of Movie Maker, and let's just let it settle a minute and we'll switch Wi Fi off. And give that a few seconds. And then we'll do the battery life check. So, in the meantime, questions. Uh, people are asking me private questions in the chat room. I can't answer those I'm afraid what's all this uh, Russian stuff coming up <laughs> to what for so it's a four cell battery it's a four cell um, battery so two parallel two serial uh, 7.2 volts at uh, 4400 milliamp hours Yeah, the icons on the desktop are set uh, big. I mean, that really helps with uh, touch. So I actually like that. It does look big, doesn't it? Um, I have them set fairly big on my other devices as well. So 3.2 watts, no. Vista experience, OK. Let's give you Vista experience numbers. System properties and <laughs> where is it? Thought it was under control panel system. I've already recalibrated the screen, yeah. Rating, here we are, 2.7. So I'll run you through the ratings. Um, processor, 3.0. Memory, 4.4. Graphics, 
Gaming graphics 2.7, a primary hard disk 5.3, and that's the uh, serial ATA drive uh, showing up there. Now there's um, this has, this doesn't have any uh, version of Vista that has touch capability on it, but there's this uh, pen mount. Um, where is it? Right pen. I oh, know that's the touch driver, pen mount control driver. They sometimes include also a little pen handwriting recognition program, which is um, usually pretty crap. And it's not on this. Maybe it'll be on the final version. But if you want handwriting recognition, you're going to have to look at um, one of the versions with Vista. One of the versions of Vista with the handwriting recognition, the tablet features in. So that's, what is that, Home Premium? What have I got here? I've got uh, Home Basic. So it's Home Premium. And the business versions, I believe, have the um, touch. Someone asked, have I tried drawing diagrams on the M912? Uh, no, I, I haven't. The only thing I do do on um, on these devices without the touch capabilities, I use PDF annotator, okay? And you can get pretty, pretty used to not putting your palm on the screen. Um, but this is a light touch screen. I know you'll see with the pen there. Um, light touch screen. So if I do this, this is a good demo. Can you see that it's not actually working? I can make that a bit better. There you go. I touch the screen at the bottom. Hey, multi-touch. <laughs> That's called uh, vectoring. Happy face. What was a happy face? What was that video? Um, I saw a video once recently. Ah, I've got uh, snap, snap icons here. Oh, happy face coming up. I need to put a big smile here. Maybe that one there. That one there. Mostly there. Good enough? <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing a happy face. What more could you want? Um, Windows Paint. Let's Let's do that. Just to convince you that it doesn't work very well. So let's make the uh, image bigger. Attributes 1280768. Right then. So there's me without. Let's make you a nice big thick pen so you can see it. Ah, can't set the pen thickness. That's a shame. Now we'll zoom in then, so that you can see it. Hmm, it's difficult for me to demo that without having a thick pen. Anyway, take it from me. Inking is not good on this thing. Don't do it, kids. Let's check that battery life again. So one hour, 45 minutes now on 71% uh, remaining. I've still got it switched to high performance. Let me put it to balance again. We'll let it relax down and then we'll look at the battery life again. It's not looking fantastic at the moment, I have to say.
<laughs> don't do ink. Schism says don't do ink. I agree, Schism. Let's just get these... Uh, Yes, yeah, someone says, is the CPU, CPU down clocked when the computer is running on battery mode? Um, no, it's free running. It's uh, speed stepping between 1.6 and 800 megahertz. And I can, well, first of all, let's check that battery life. It's been sitting there in balance mode. Two hours, 26 minutes on 71% remaining battery. Um, that is two hours, 50 minutes up to three hours on this build and as I said before this isn't the final build there could be things that change I would expect that to get much better to three and a half hours at least with this battery because that uh, at the moment seems to be sapping a bit more than it needs to yeah it's um as someone says, they're heavy harmonies. The SC3 is actually extremely efficient, um, averaging about 8 watts drain. Um, but because of the tiny, tiny battery on it, it doesn't give you more than 2.5 hours battery life. Now, this one seems to be averaging like 12 watts, which is 50% more drain or less efficient than the SC3, but of course it's got a bigger battery. That's why it's 1.4 kilos instead of 800 grams. Right, let me just uh, stop the recording, the Ustream recording, and we'll. Uh, I'll say thanks for coming along uh, to the uh, chat and watching the video, and thanks to Mobilex again for for sending it over. This has been Chippy from UMC Portal. Thanks for.